One of the things I found so helpful about your book was the concept of legal fictions. And I found that so uh, fascinating. Um, and just in general, the philosophy of law and how relevant yeah. that is to this topic and to responding to some of the objections. So I thought perhaps you could give a few examples of legal fictions or just uh, sure. some discussion of how this ties into the atonement. Yes, the idea here is that it is a very common practice in courts of law for the court to adopt a legal fiction for the sake of a particular action before the court. A legal fiction is something that the court knows to be false, but nevertheless, it is adopted as an assumption on which then to base the action. And in the case of the atonement, I think the legal fiction that God as the supreme judge might adopt would be that Christ committed these sins for which he is then punished rather than us. Obviously, Christ is sinless. He could not commit sin. Um, and yet God adopted for the purposes of our redemption the legal fiction that Christ had committed these sins rather than us so that he might then be justly punished in our place. In 19th century maritime law, the legal fiction was adopted that ships are persons. And this allowed the authorities to intercept smugglers and even slave traders uh, to impound their cargoes and free the slaves because the ship was held to be the wrongdoer. And this became the settled practice in maritime law. Another famous example is um, Mastrin versus Fabregas, where uh, Mr. Fabregas was uh, a resident of the Mediterranean island of Menorca, which was then under British control. And he sued the governor of Menorca for unlawful arrest and imprisonment. The problem was the suit couldn't proceed in Menorca without the approval of the governor himself, who was being sued. And so what Mr. Fabregas did was he brought suit in the court of common pleas back in London. And Lord Mansfield, the judge in the case, realizing that justice was not going to be done in this case, unless he adopted a legal fiction that for the purposes of this action, Menorca was part of London. And therefore, Mr. Fabregas counted as a resident of London and could successfully bring his suit. <laughs> so given the use of legal fictions in Anglo-American law, there's perfect precedent for God adopting the legal fiction that Christ committed these sinful acts and therefore could be justly punished for them. <laughs>